When my first escrow office um, win and she called me for $250, right, Tiny? I split that and I called up one of my sorority sisters. If someone knows what they want and they know that you have it, then what's left to agree upon? When can you come? That's the question I'm wondering. Let's talk about notary. I'll give an example of what that looks like in the notary. Fascinating. Something special oh. for uh, a, a group of people. But anyway, thank you. Listen, my name is uh, Ete Kamamaku. I go by Tech. That's my nickname, right? And I have a very interesting story. It may not be unlike anyone else's, but uh, I actually do still work. I have a full, not full-time job. I actually work part-time because I work in pediatric orthopedic sports medicine, right? And here in California, the schools are still closed and the sports are canceled still. So it's unlike anywhere else in the, in the country, a couple places here and there. But might have, have to speak this. up a little bit louder, uh, Tech. Okay. Yeah, let me know if you can hear me. My volume is okay. Yeah, so, yeah, my name is Tech Amaku, and I am a notary public and done, doing it for two years. I actually work in pediatric orthopedics and sports medicine. So you hear my... IG handle is Dr. Tech Music. So I am not a doctor for the record, okay? I'm not a physician, okay? However, I have worked in pediatric orthopedics and sports medicine for 17 years. And to be honest, I can tell you everything about your joints, your knees, your shoulders, your elbows, your ankles, your hips, whatever, you know? That's my area of specialty. I love it. I still do it. But I also have a notary business, as you can see. And it's important that you guys understand that I come from this foundation of business ownership, right? This concept of working business owners. And that is really, uh, is really founded from the only way to really generate uh, wealth for yourself and for your family, for your community, and for people around you is, to, is through business ownership, right? Ownership of stocks, ownership of businesses, ownership of real estate, ownership of of uh, you know partnerships, otherwise you know it's um, otherwise you're just kind of spinning your wheels. So notary is a great business, and with the advent and evolution of the technology, the internet, um, I you know you want to better yourself. I came across a lot of material online as far as how to learn how to do the notary business, be good at it. Tiger Talil's book. The first thing I came across was the $250,000 call script, and it really changed the game. If you really lay, uh, pay attention and you really kind of take notes on to what is being said, you know, you take that information, you adapt it to your environment, to your circumstance, and you can really take off and really do some incredible things. And that's what I've done, and I've been able to do that. So, hey, Tiger, thank you for uh, putting out that material. It really has helped a lot. And, uh, uh, no question, man, no question. Hey, uh, and, and ladies and gentlemen, Tech is smart as hell. I ain't that smart as this dude, oh, yeah. man. What 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 university did you go to? The University of San Francisco, man. USF, the original USF, not South Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, whatever, man. Listen, to be honest, <laughs> listen, we're trying to figure out that college is is not a scam, right? College higher education is not a scam per se, right? But we're starting to figure out, and people are really starting to realize that it's built on this foundation of sand, right? It could collapse. Is it really worth what it's worth? And, you know, it comes down to um, what do you want to do in your life? Mm -hmm. You know, do you need to go to college? Maybe, maybe not. Me, for what I wanted to do, absolutely, right? Study medicine, study the body, study anatomy, study physiology, how things work, study human movement, performance, nutrition, training, you know, those things you absolutely need a higher degree of training, right? That's what college is, it's training. They train you how to do a particular job, right? But when it comes to entrepreneurship, you don't get that information. When it comes to growing your wealth, when it comes to saving, when it comes to credit, when it comes to all these other intangible things that really matter and really you know, are uh, fundamental in your life, you don't get any of that information. So listen, man, a degree is a degree. It's, it's a piece of paper as far as I'm concerned. I took a lot from college, but to be honest, you know, it takes you so far. The rest is up to you. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 there's so many questions I want to ask you, but I wanted to give everybody the backdrop so they 
can understand like you know your where you're coming from so you do have you still have your full-time job is that correct yes and no <laughs> yes okay. because technically yes i do still have it because i haven't been like fired or anything but mm -hmm. like i said lockdown pandemic shelter in place all these things have disrupted how sports are being played mm. and how um schools are being attended so as a result uh yeah i still have it you know and i still do it uh, but it's just it's the circumstances have changed right They're so like, let me ask you this why, why did you get into the notary business out of all businesses right i mean let's be honest the notary business flies under the radar mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know about it especially when it comes to traveling notaries what how, how'd you get into this business you know, uh, that's a good question, but it's pretty simple. Hmm. So around 2016, 17, you know, I really wanted to buy a house, right? And where I live in California, boy, you better make some bread, make some real dough. I'm sorry. Listen, there's so much valuable property here, so much money here. I live in the tech innovation capital of the world. Right? So you're in Silicon Valley. This is Silicon Valley, man. This is That's home crazy. of Facebook, home of Twitter, home of uh, Dropbox, home of uh, Salesforce, home of Oracle. I mean, I could go on and on. IBM, Apple, they're like right down the street from here, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, in order to do this, listen, do you need a lot of money? No, you don't necessarily, but you need to know, you need to understand how the game is played. And business ownership is a large part of that game, right? Mm -hmm. So looking into that, I uh, came across Boyce Watkins. I came across uh, a lot of uh, thought leaders who are promoting, you know, business ownership in the black community, right? Andre Hatchett happens to come across my page as well. I'm like, who is this brother, man? He kind of looks like me. <laughs> he got glasses. <laughs> <Right. laughs> but um, Shout out to Andre Hatchett. Yeah, listen. Andre Hatchett, I want to give a special shout out to him, man. I got to do a, we, we can do a whole episode just on him, right? We can do a whole. Oh, I, you know, I might have him on the show. Yeah. So. Don't miss that if you can. Yeah. But um, so coming to uh, after uh, learning more about business ownership, seeing Andre Hatchett here and there, I'm like, what's, I know what a notary is, but not really. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You know, I know what a notary is, but not really. I didn't know the depth in the history of notary and I've come to learn about it. But funny story at Afrotech, you, if you're familiar with Afrotech, it's a big No, conference. I never heard of that. Yeah, it's a big uh, conference for black tech uh, 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 people, you know, people who work in tech. Okay. And um, turns out Andre was there. So, and I saw his name pop up and I said, listen, I got to meet this guy. Mm-hmm. I meet this guy. Happened to meet him, and it was his from there. He said, "Listen, I've been following your videos, watching here and there." He said, "Listen, man, if you're interested, you would probably be good at it, given your skill set, uh, things that you're interested in. Do it. Let me know." So sat on it for a little bit, did a little bit more research, and then finally just said, "Listen, oh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I got fired from my job, right? You got fired." Got Fire, I terminated so, my so, so uh, yeah, tell 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 yeah. tell the people about that. What what happened? It, yeah, so, so so are you saying like because you got fired, you that's what made you attack the notary industry a little bit more aggressively? Exactly. It kind of forces you to go all in. That's what happened to me. I got fired too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And it happens. That's cool. It happens. People <laughs> right. Don't take anything personal, right? You lose your job, you lose your job. Whatever, it happens. But when you're on death's door, put it that way, right? I wasn't literally on death's door, but when you hit, when you thought you had everything, and this is so relevant today because people have jobs and they lose their jobs that they thought they would have and they thought it was secure. But the reality is that it's not secure, is it? Is it, right? You know it's not, right? right. If you don't own that job, you don't own that company. If you're not the CEO, if you're not in that executive suite, you're not one of the top five people in that company you can you can lose your job at any time you really could right mm -hmm. and that happened to me listen i'm a damn good athletic trainer right that's my profession i'm damn good at it i got two degrees got all this advanced training got all these national certifications there's about thirty thousand athletic trainers in the country of that thirty thousand, 130 have the certification i have so 
very select few people. So I was good at the job. And plus I walked into another job like two weeks later, no problem. But nonetheless, I was terminated, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a whole nother subject as well. Right. So that forced me, new house, new wife, uh, got cars, got stuff to pay for, you know, that forced me to- That pressure is real. That pressure is real and you will <laughs> respond and you better respond, right? You should respond. Yeah, it, it, it's sink or swim, right? And it's a, you know, pressure can make a diamond or it could bust a pipe, man. So it's like, how do you handle pressure? Mm -hmm. Uh, You can't run away from it, right? Um, And some people need that. Some people need to, you know, listen, a lot of people's lives, I ain't going to say, I don't know anything about anybody's personal life here, but mm -hmm. listen, man, we got some, we we got some easy lives, right? And again, this is all relative. Right to what people are going through, but sometimes that level of comfort is what's holding a lot of people back. And when you yes. are faced against, listen, man, I was driving Lyft, I was doing like all these little uh, odd jobs here and there. I got, I had some savings. I was good, but I didn't want to dip into my savings because that dip, the savings will disappear real quick. So in the meantime, I wanted to get some money going, and uh, whatever, man. I'm doing, listen, when I was there was one particular time when I was driving Lyft. And again, we are in the tech capital of the world. One of my passengers, I had passengers, I had the, the CEO of Fitbit was in my car one time. I had, uh, you know, I had all kinds of entrepreneurs. And one thing I learned was asking questions. That's one thing that the Ask questions. 250, $250,000 call scripts uh, talks about. Ask questions. If you're not comfortable with talking to strangers, you can't be successful. You've got to be agree. able to talk to people, right? So, and I've had I have this history of examining patients, asking questions, trying to figure out what what their ailments are. So I just use that to my advantage, right? I had an executive from Thumbtack, and that's something we'll talk about later on. This app called Thumbtack. Some people never heard of it. It's an app. It's like TaskRabbit, Craigslist, Angie's List, those type of uh, uh, professional referral services. And he said, "Hey, man, you should get on this app." I said, "Really?" He said, "Yeah, yeah. You should try it out. See what you think." And next thing you know. I tried it out, started to get some hits, have some success, and I used the 250,000 call script, uh, applied that to my business model, start removing certain uh, points. Or now, let, let, let's talk about that. Let, let, let's unpack that, right? So you were able to do something really interesting with the combination of some apps, right? Which right. allowed you to automate your notary appointments and payment gateways, yeah. you combine two apps. Tell, tell the people about that a little, uh, how, how you were able, like <laughs> the frame of okay. mind of thinking they even do. I didn't even think of that, dude. Like you put me on the game. So All tell right. people about how you did that. All right, so let's get pay attention, it, ladies and gentlemen. By, hold on, real quick. Yeah. Want to welcome everybody because people are just still coming in the room and everything. So shout out to you guys um, for for coming in and joining us on the Notary War Room. We're here with Tech Amaku. Uh, he is about to break down how he was able to automate his scheduling, payment gateways for him to run appointments, and a lot of times he doesn't even speak no. to the client. So break that down for us, brother. Let me ask you a question, Tiger. You're a smart man, aren't you? You, You've Uh, been around a block, right? You know, according to my teachers, I ain't that smart, but yeah, sure. (laughs) You got straight A's (laughs) in high school, right? (laughs) Shit, not me. (laughs) But let me ask you a question. Why do you have to talk to every single person? Is that necessary that you talk to every single client that you have? Think about this from a notary's perspective, right? Mm. Not every industry is like this, but think about this from a notary perspective. Why, and this is a question for everybody, right? Why do you have to talk to every single client? You, you don't. Might, you don't, right? You you can say it. You, oh, no, I want to make sure I connect with the person. I want to make sure I have a feel for what they're asking. Sure. I want to let them hear my voice. And that's all good and fine, but you know what? You want to be, you want to know something, man? They hire you because you can fulfill a, a need that they have, right? And that's signing a document, right? You might have the cheapest price. You may be the most expensive, but 
the question at the end of the day is, can you perform the job? Can you get this done? Can you do it correctly? Can you do it right, accurate the first time and not have documents rejected? So then they have to waste more time, waste, waste more money. You don't know what kind of schedule they're on, right? They want to know, can you get the job done? And that's, so I can provide the service for you and you need the service for me. It's really just that it, it that, that's really it, right? All the other stuff in between, that's unnecessary. Well, and it's very difficult to, to scale when you're right. answering all of those phone calls like that. It's very difficult. So very much so. I, but yeah, I, I used to think I had to talk to everybody. When I first started in the notary industry, because all the phone calls was coming in, um, I knew I had to be able to. The first thing I did was create the call script very first thing right the reason why i wanted to be able to disqualify the tire kickers from the actual people that that was ready to purchase right you could waste your time with a lot of tire kickers they're asking you a million questions and they have no damn intentions of purchasing your product or service right and then let, let's be honest ladies and gentlemen there are notaries that are calling you trying to infiltrate your your, your system and your business <laughs> let, 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 let's be honest here. Let, let's let's keep it a hundred hundred grand in the hand. They're taking notes on you, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. They want to say, that's oh, okay. how much is this person charging? Yeah, that's okay. So so 100 percent right? So as far as people calling me, so the tire kickers, right? Eliminate those people. Right. Don't entertain those people because although, and they slip through the cracks here and there, but although um, uh, you know, they obviously have a need as well, but what you're exactly what you said, you're wasting time. If someone knows what they want and they know that you have it, then what's left to agree upon? Really? Just really just the time. Really? Mm -hmm. When can you come? That's the question I want to hear. What time can you be here? So this is what I did. So I did, I had, my first, before I read your book, and I, this is a shout out, this is a credit directly to you, to be perfectly honest, I'll keep that 100%. My process was very sloppy. It was very unorganized. People would call me, and Andre, you know, his course, credit to his course, he's like, listen, do A, B, and C, and your phone will ring. And I did A, B, and C, and sure enough, my phone started ringing. But I wasn't ready for that because I'm asking, all right, um, what kind of document do you have? Okay, all right. Um, Will you be able to sign at two o'clock on Thursday? Well, what about Wednesday? Is that good for you? Um, will uh, will all of your parties be there? Like it's very mm -hmm. sloppy, very unorganized, it's very unprofessional. And callers, they hear it. Mm -hmm. They know that they can hear it when your operation is very staggered and very unorganized. So I eliminate all of that. Start off with the note with the script. So someone calls me, hey. Um, Hey, I live in Chicago, and I have a, I have a, um, a domestic partnership application because you know me and my uh, fiance we're not married, but we need to get access to this money, <laughs> right? That's really what they're asking. They want to get this money, so I stop them right there. All right, first of all, I need three pieces of information. First, really, I need to know where do you live, because that's going to tell me how much I need to charge you for travel. Second, I need to know. Do you have your valid form of identification? So do you have a driver's license, a passport? So that way I know that you are who you say you are. Can you prove that? Yeah, okay. And then how many times are you gonna be signing a document? Those three pieces of information is really all I need. Really only two, where do you live and how many times are you gonna sign a document? Mm -hmm. That's really all the information I really need. So they know, they call me, they know I can fulfill this. I know I can. What I've done is just given them those two questions to answer ahead of time. And then once they say yes, confirm, they pay, then I get the alert, shows up on my phone, and then I accept it, and then I go meet them. That's mm -hmm. it. That's the, that's the entire process there. Now, um, you were able to do... Um, now, how did you do this? You, you took the call script and put it into Calendly? Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. So yes. Break that down. So yeah. So there's three ways people can find you, right? Mm -hmm. They can either call you, right? They can either Google you or they can either walk into your place of business if you have a brick and mortar spot. So we're mobile. 
we don't have a physical location. So you get to either call me or you got to Google me. So once you Google me, once you call me and, and finding your position on Google search results, that's a whole nother subject as well, right? You yeah. got to have your SEO up, right? And I pay someone to do that for me to actually put me in a certain position. So when people hit certain keywords, my name pops up. So you hit my name, click on the link, click on my calendar or click on my website. And then the call script is already there or the intake form is already there. They fill it out. They enter the name. They answer a couple of questions. Where do you live? What kind of document do you have? Mm -hmm. How many signatures are, how many people are going to be signing this, including yourself? And, you know, there's some other questions in there as far as, you know, security gate codes, parking, dogs. All right. I don't want to walk into your house and there's dogs jumping all yeah, over the place, yeah. right? Because yeah, that happens. And um, I've got some stories about crazy stuff and people pulling pistols on. Man, listen. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. In California, <laughs> where properties, yeah. But anyway, those first three questions, and then they agree. Now, now, a, a question that I get all the time is, how do you price it, right? How do you get people, how do you uh, determine what the cost is, right? And that's going to be up to you. I can't tell you how, what the price of services is, but I want to tell you that if you are willing to go into a house that you don't know who lives there, you don't know what's in there, consider your safety. You got to you want to go there at 8 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock in the morning. You have to cross a bridge. You have to park. Uh, you know, how much is your time worth? How much mm -hmm. is your that hour or that 30 minutes of your time worth? And then you set the price. So some people don't know how to figure that out. How do you figure out what my time is worth? And there's steps to figure that out as well. You know? Matter of fact, let, let, let's have, ask everybody on here now. Um, <clears throat> who on here on this notary war room is brand new to the game? Type in one if you're brand new to the game. If, if like you've never notarized not one piece of paper yet. Type in one. Type in two if you have done some notarizations and you do have some skin in the game. And type in three if you're a damn expert. God damn, the threes came in quick. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> woo, them threes are like, woo, zoom. Okay, okay, we got, we got ones. We got quite a few ones, and then we have a lot of threes, and then a few twos. Okay. So let me ask you guys, um, and, and let's, let's be honest, you don't have to put in a number or how much you get paid, but in your heart of hearts, do you feel that you are underpriced when you are selling your services? Type in yes or no. Okay. And thank you for being honest too. Shout mm -hmm. out to you, Jamie. Tamara, um, Erica says yes. Uh, Michelle says yes. Elvis wow. says it. God, Lee. Melinda says yes. Everybody says yes. Yeah. So that's, that's a problem. That is a problem. That's a, that's a problem. We 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 need to we need to fix that. But I would have said the same thing, you know, a year ago, mm -hmm. a year and a half ago. I probably would have said the same thing. Yeah. I think my services are underpriced. Yeah. Uh, it, it it's got to come down to like like we we won't be able to dive in deeper with that but i just wanted to ask that question because like by you guys typing that in to this chat right here it, you're acknowledging that hey you should be charging more you should be getting paid more for your services especially if you are doing real estate documents right oh goodness especially if you're doing real estate documents but that is a different conversation um you know, it, it, again, if you guys want to join me for the four week live interactive workshop, you could just go to stamping, uh, stampingfordollars.com and then type in the coupon code RISE2021, RISE2021. So real quick, um, so Tech, you don't talk, you really don't talk to your clients anymore, like to book the appointments. If all right. So I'm going to go back to that one point you said, because mm -hmm. the real estate documents, right? Yeah. All right. So most most notaries, 
that I've encountered and most of the movies that I've seen, they get their appointments through these signing services. Mm-hmm. Maybe a few of them go directly to the title companies, and that's probably a better way to go about it. But nonetheless, there is a need for these signing services because they give you appointments. Now, what happens when that appointment's over? You mean because those signing services, to be perfectly honest, right? You know this, they're just going for the lowest bidder, right? If it's if you're doing it for 75 bucks, they're gonna do go to you. If you're gonna do it for 90, you're gonna agree to that, it'll go for you, right? So so I saw how that was being played out. And okay, it's good in the beginning, but when I would get my clients privately, I noticed that there was a difference. Mm-hmm. First of all, they agreed to higher prices, right? Because they understood what was on the other side of that normalization. You might have a hundred million dollars. Grandma might have left you six hundred million dollars somewhere, and you understand that I need to get this document notarized that proves that I'm a U.S. citizen and that I am who I, you know, this descendant of this person, so that I can get the six hundred million dollars, right? Mm-hmm. Would you pay five thousand dollars for a notary if you knew you're gonna get six hundred? Hell million yeah, I would. I right. wouldn't even blink. <laughs> wouldn't even blink. And you know what? That happens all the time. So some people are aware of this. Some people are not aware of this. So, so that happens, right? And now there's people who also they um you know they have continuous work done right you have attorneys you have um, uh, gas companies you have construction companies you have uh, uh you know even uh, even private entrepreneurs who constantly need notarizations done you know maybe once a week uh two or three times a month so what i've done is again if you're already smart in whatever you do you're knowledgeable you're you're, you're you have intellect in what you do You'll probably, chances are, be good at that if you even if you went to another industry, right? And so what I did was started applying that same level of service, that same level of customer cares, that same level of attention to the notary business that I did in medicine, right? Mm-hmm. So if I see that there's a person who has a continuous need, I'll form a relation a relationship with them, a partnership. And what I do is I give them a specific link, their own personal link. I say, listen. You know, hey, Tiger, man, I see that you've got this uh, construction company and, or you've got this uh, heating and um, uh, air conditioning company. You guys constantly need these notarizations in order to do your repairs and do your digging. Listen, eliminate all, you know, you don't have to go to UPS or you don't have to Google every single time. Here's a link. This goes directly to me. I'm the person who answers this. When you need services, hit this link. You know, if you need something emergency last minute, you're up at 11 o'clock at night and you think it's too late, go into the server, go hit this link, boom, it goes directly to me. You need it for eight o'clock tomorrow morning, I'm there. You don't have to talk to anybody. You don't have to call, you don't have to see who's available. You don't have to leave voicemails. You don't have to, you know, I, I go to signers' houses and they, and it, this is feedback as well. They'll tell me, oh, you're the sixth person I called. I called eight people and no one answered the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I left voicemails with six different people. No one returned my call. Yeah. You're the person who you... I said, I'm the only person who answered? What if I just didn't even answer and you just called me directly or you just went to this link directly? So that's how I completely... So there, So let's say there's five steps and you and the signer pick, uh, select me. I just removed four of those. Just yeah. one step only. One yeah. step only. And anything that you could do to streamline your business and make it easier for the customer make it easier for the customer. And what he's saying is gospel, ladies and gentlemen, because I do, after he taught me this system, what he just broke down, I did the same thing. And at first it, it felt kind of funny. I was like, man, this, this shit ain't gonna work, right? And I was like, it's probably just working in California, right? 